is Brenda, your host for Your Life Matters. Once again, it is so awesome to be with you today to share the Word of God, aligning it up with worldview issues of today. And that's the purpose of Your Life Matters, because I want to show you that your presence is so important. Your input and opinion is valued, and you have the right to have a voice to speak those things that does not align up with the Word of God, but also don't be afraid to live the Word, because your light needs to be shined in this dark world, because people are trying to find a way to escape. But the only way that could happen is when we decide to be obedient to the word, let our light so shine so that they know that we will help lead them to the one that's going to change their life. And that's Jesus Christ. So as you know, we've got to get our platform right. Let's open up with the word of God. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for just being our Lord, our God, and our Redeemer. It's because of you and your wisdom and not my own that, Lord Jesus, we are able to live this life today. Lord, we ask that your word and wisdom will come forth so that we are able to open up an understanding to those who are trying to learn how to live the life of Christ as we live in this world today. Thank you so much for your insight. Thank you, Lord, for being our Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, folks. Uh, let me tell you, all right, I, I am, I'm wondering those who accepted the Lord, Jesus Christ, our King, are you truly, really ready to serve for the kingdom? It, it's, a, it's a question that we really need to ask ourselves, you know, and, and I have to ask myself that all the time because sometimes things of life comes to be so hard that you're like, you know, I, I just can't make those decisions. But we've got to remember why we need to make those decisions. And that reason why is, is that we are being an example of the word. We're letting our light to so shine for those who are trying to get out of the world of darkness. We're leading them to Jesus Christ, their Savior, their Redeemer. Um, so important about that. Um, and then by that, we're helping each other to live the life of obedience so that we can reign in heaven when God sends Jesus back on this earth to take us home. And, and that's the end point is being home in heaven. Now, now let's look at this now because, you know, I hear people and, 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 you know, and it took me a long time to understand this as well, that we need to grasp this attention. Just because we accept the Lord Jesus Christ does not mean that that's the only thing we have to do to be a Christian. All right. It's not to let's accept Jesus Christ ticket card and go. Now I'm in heaven. I don't have to worry about anything else. Let me tell you, that's the wrong answer. The word of God through the whole book. All right. Explains, hey, there's still things that you need to do by grace and by love to still fulfill the laws of Christ. Still. All right. We still have to live in a way that honors God. You know, the Lord said, look, when you're living the life of Christ, all right, being obedient to my word, do not do it in a way that people's going to hate me. That's right, folks. Our lifestyle has to be in such a way so that they would love to hear about Jesus and fall in love with him just like we did. And they need to know about the love of God and the sacrifice that he has done by sending Jesus on this earth, just like he did. Folks, God has not stopped loving us from the time that we were conceived. He has not stopped loving us from the time that we rejected his word, turn our back on him. And those who might have been believers that went astray. God has not stopped loving us. He hasn't. I don't care what the world says. I don't care what they call us when we make mistakes. It doesn't matter. God says, I still love you even when you make mistakes. He says, what opens up this door or what tears down the barrier so that we can have this close relationship with each other is forgiveness. That's all he says. Just ask for forgiveness. And when you do that, all that crap that you think that you're condemned and guilty for is gone. It doesn't hinder you. It doesn't haunt you. And the love of God will start to permeate in your spirit once again. And that joy will stir back up in your spirit. Folks, God will not abandon. We might. We're good about that. But God 
does not abandon. Why is this important? Because the world now is using this one word, all right, and they think that it's an answer for everything, all right? Love, L-O-V-E, love. Why don't we just love everybody and let them be? Because you need to know the origin of the word love. See, when we talk about love, we're on that kumbaya kind of moment, that huggy kissy moment, you know, let me feel good. Let my flesh feel the tingling of the sensation of being loved. I'm sorry, folks, but that's not the love that we're talking about. And that's not the love that God is talking about. Because the love that I'm bringing to you is the one who sent his son, Jesus Christ, on this earth. That's right. His name is God, Yahweh, Jehovah. That's who it is, our creator who made heaven and earth. That's who he is, our father. He is the original love. And with that, he says that love needs to be permeated inside of us because when that type of love is in us, then the world sees God. But shoot, it, it's, it's difficult to do that when we look at love as the feely, touchy, give me kissy type of love. And you can't see God through all of that swapping spit in the whole nine yards and it's just not happening. That's just too much muddy stuff. All right. God is a God of love. That is his true identity. He is Lord of Lord and King of Kings. He is the great I am. He is the everlasting father. Through all of this, he is pure, unadulterated love. See, 1 Corinthians 13 brings it to light, you know, because he is a God that understands. He's a God that doesn't judge. He's a God that that doesn't backbite and call us names and 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 but he, he he respects us and he loves us you know what i mean and and all these things and you know what let's be honest about it all these attributes that we keep asking people to show that's what he does automatically without even being asked respect honor forgiveness camaraderie being nice to neighbors is an automatic given so this is the love that we're supposed to portray. Now, in addition to that, all right, when we are willing to exercise this, God says, you know what? You'll know my people. You'll know the believers who so-called call themselves Christians. You will know that they were sent by me by their fruits. So when he talks about the fruits, we're not talking apple, oranges, you know, let's, let's not get corny here. We're talking about the attributes and accolades that we always want to see in an individual. And this spirit of fruits that he's talking about, are you ready? Here we go. Love, joy, goodness, gentleness, self-control. And let me, I have to raise my hand on that because I'm, I'm still working on that. That's an everyday thing for me. Peacemaker, meekness temperance and faithfulness folks why are we trying to reinvent the wheel when the word of god shows exactly how we're supposed to treat each other why see we have liberty and freedom through jesus christ our king but let's not get this wrong because in romans it says you know what since we got this liberty and freedom does it give us permission to still sin to still do what we want to do and the word of God says, God forbids. You have the freedom to live life, to give honor and, and joy and, and, and thanksgiving to the Lord, to Jesus, to your neighbors, treat them right. That's where that liberty comes from. Because the spirit inside of this body is excited when goodness is brought to them. But when we're willing to redefine love in our own wisdom, you know what? We are never going to be satisfied. We are never going to be happy because we will always judge and go, that's not the way I wanted it. That's not the what I said. I don't understand why that has to be done that way. Come on, folks. We're human. We will do that. All right, let's be honest about this. Why is this a big issue for me? Because we have a church in Renton, and it was on the news. 
you know, King Five, all the other news publicizing it. And they had doors and rainbow colors out in the front. And the problem with that was somebody decided they wanted to put little explosives on there and blow up the door and, and damage it in the whole nine yards. And why is that? Is because the church stated that, hey, they're in support of the LGBT community. All right. I don't mind that. I love that. I am too. But this is the difference. We can love those who do not agree with the word of God. But see, the Lord says we need to hate the sin, though, that identifies who they are. Being in that sexual activity that identifies you in the LGBT community goes against the word of God. I'm sorry, folks, but from here, I'm going to have to tell you, it's not a DNA. It's a sin nature. And why does each one get take that? That I don't know. But I know sin nature will creep in, create confusion to the point where the person doesn't understand why they're going through those actions. But let me explain to you, you're not condemned in that if you want to leave it. But if you stay there, you're there. But there is a way of escape if you want it. I have two good friends. They are just so awesome. They just finished a, a freedom march in uh, Minneapolis. Um, Jeffrey McCall. All right. He is such an awesome friend of mine. Um, he was a transgender. His name was Scarlett. Uh, wrote a book called Such a Time as This. It's about his biography, his life story as a transgender, but then how he returned back to the Lord and how the Lord has just loving all over him. The second person is Luis Ruiz. He was one of the survivors of the Pulse shooting there in Florida. Awesome guy uh, from there. And I love his motto when he says, it's not about a gay to straight thing. See, we, we need to stop doing that, folks, because it's not a birthright type of entity. All right? It's not a gay to straight thing. It is a lost to save thing, as Luis explains it to me. It's because sin nature has entered into their hearts didn't know what to do, didn't have the, the right support that they needed. But until someone brought Christ to their lives, or until the Lord came in there and knocked on the doors of their heart and they said, yes, Lord, that's when everything turned. Folks, I encourage you to go on the Facebook page and look at Jeffrey McCall, M-C-C-A-L-L, and Luis Ruiz, R-U-I-Z-E. Look at their Facebook. Look at the testimonies. They're doing awesome things in love. At uh, St. Paul, Minneapolis, they had over 400 people attending their Freedom March in regards to LGBTs not being afraid to stand up and says, I've accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, and I am so excited. I watched some of those testimonies uh, that they had there a couple of nights ago on Facebook. It's on there. You can take a look at it. There was one person. She was just so awesome. 30 years in that life. 30 years. And she has accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as her personal Savior. For what I'm trying to explain to you is this. It doesn't matter how long you've been in it. It doesn't matter. God doesn't look at the timetable. God doesn't look at how you've done it. All God is saying is, look, I love you. Let me love you and show you what my son can do for you. He's looking about a relationship. You know, and I love it when Jeffrey and Luis, they are, they are so awesome. And they said, yes, I'm in love. I'm in love with a man. I'm in love with a man. I love when Jeffrey and Luis does that. And that man is Jesus Christ. And they're so excited. So I encourage you to look that up. But I want to encourage this church that is supporting the LGBT community and the Pride March. I encourage you. What you're doing is not biblical. Yes, we love, respect those God has created, the humanity, the human being. But what we put in this vessel that's not of God, we cannot support. I want you to remember, there are two books here. We got the book of life, where the Bible states it records all of us. But if we go opposite from the, from the word of God, then we're blotted out of the book of life. Then we got the lamb book of life. Those who accepted Jesus Christ as their personal savior. Folks, we won't get blotted out of that. 
But the thing is, it's recorded every action, thought, and things that we do, whether it's for God or not for the Lord. And that book is what's going to open up in front of us, and we have to give an account of why we went against the word of God. See, when we accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, we also said that we're going to accept the cup of salvation. And you remember the, the, the two brothers and the mother that asked Jesus, will you take my sons up and that they can stand at the, uh, beside you when you're in heaven? And, you know, the Lord, you know, Jesus said, well, look, you know, can they, can they endure what I endure? Can they take the cup that I've taken? The responsibility? He says, them going up to heaven and being on my right hand of the throne of God, that's not my, that's not my place. It's not my decision. That's God's. But while they take the cup, are they willing to endure that? And, I, and that's what I'm asking you. Are you willing to endure what Jesus went through? See, that's the example of biblical living that God wants us to emulate so that people can see the love steps that Jesus have taken. Are you willing to do that? Yes, Jesus was spit upon. Yes, he was slandered. Yes, he was called names. Yes, at the end he died. Doesn't sound glorious, but you know what? When we change our way of thinking, it is glorious because it's the end result that is important, which is when God says, well done, thy good and faithful servant, come into me and rest. See, heaven is not for everyone, folks. Heaven is for the ones who decide to go through this journey, leading people to salvation, leading them with relationship with Jesus Christ. That's all God is saying is have a relationship with my son. Experience the love and freedom that I can give you, separating you from the sin nature of this world. Let me give you an example why this is so important. In the book of Revelations, all right, and I, and I just want to read this to you. When you go to chapter 12, verse 9 through 17, it talks about two wars. There's the war in heaven and the war in earth. Now, the war in heaven was about our enemy, Satan. Michael was fighting against him because Satan decided he wanted to be above God. He was accusing, all right, um, the uh, believer. He was accusing the angels, accusing the authority of, of Christ. He was, he was just being a, a troublemaker, stirring up, stirring up strife up in heaven. And it says that he accused them day and night before our God. They defeated him by the blood of the lamb and by their testimony. This is how we win, biblically win, is when we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior and we're willing to open our mouth and testify of the glory of God and what he's done for us. Because see, Satan does not want us to tell about the victories in our lives to those who date Satan wants to destroy. And that's why believers, we are getting beaten up here sometimes because Satan does not want us to have the victory. He wants us to be licking our wounds and saying, I can't go on. But I encourage you, just like Moses has encouraged Joshua, be strong and courageous. Go forth and do that. There you'll find in Joshua 1, verse 7, 8, 9, and 10. Be strong and courageous out there. Don't give up. So the thing is, heaven was rejoicing because Satan was knocked down. He was set, set, sent down on this world, all right, because he was trying to destroy what God had. Now, this is what happened now. He said, but woe to you people of the world. He's talking about us. Not, not as believers, but everybody. For the devil has come down to you in great anger, knowing that he has little time. That he knows that he has little time before God sends Jesus back on this earth to take us back home. So Satan is out there to destroy as many of God's creation as he possibly can. Now listen, folks. Satan also knows the heart of the people just like God does. So for those who do not know the Lord, Satan knows who you are. He knows where your heart is at. He knows that your heart can change and accept Jesus Christ. So he's going to browse beat you as much as we. But what we're saying to you is this. Your way of escape is through Jesus Christ, our king. That's where our victory lies. 
is in the Son of God. Our sword is the Word of God. We exercise our faith as the breastplate of righteousness. We keep pushing on. The reason why this battle is here is because God wants us to lead people out of this area before he sends Jesus down to bring us back to heaven. He wants many to go to heaven. He doesn't want to lose a soul. Now let me tell you about the war on earth. See, Satan, when he found himself cast down on earth, he persecuted the woman, which is Israel. Because Israel went through so much trauma. The biggest thing is when they had the Holocaust. And who had given birth to the child. But she was given two wings like those of great eagles to fly into the wilderness to the place prepared for her where she would care for and protect, be protected from Satan. Israel, all right, was protected from Satan. And today she's protected again because there's many of us who are praying for Israel. And there's many Messianic rabbis out there spreading the gospel, being willing to be chastised by accepting Yeshua. Because this is the protection that Israel has. And see, Satan, all right, he tried to destroy her. He tried to just get rid of her, but that was not going to happen. And the word of God says this, Satan is out there to attack the rest of the children, which is us, us Gentiles, as well as the Jews, but us Gentiles. All who are keeping God's commandments and confessing that they belong to Jesus. He is trying to destroy the believers. Folks, what this church done has opened up that door for sin nature now to grow because they have decided to support the pride march, not the LGBT community. That's a different thing. They're human beings. They're God's creation. He said, we love them. But see, the thing is, God also states we need to hate the sin. That lifestyle that they live is not of a DNA. It's not biological. It's sin nature that creeped into their lives. We need to love them and let them know that God loves them just the way they are. They don't have to put on any facade to be with Jesus. They don't have to make any requirements. There's no penance to do. No counting on the beads. All Jesus is saying is, accept me as I am. Are you willing to accept Jesus Christ and the love that he poured forth for you? That's all he's saying. Are you willing to accept me so that I can change your life and show you the true love that comes from my father? Through me, I give to you. See, when we're accepting Jesus Christ as our personal savior, it opens up many doors for healing, for reconciliation. All right. There's a song that we used to sing. It was a hymnal that we used to sing, and I don't know all the words, but it says, just as I am without one plea, just as I am, God never made it a requirement. Everywhere through the book, all right, you will see that God has never asked anyone to do something first to be accepted and receive his blessings. The only thing that he asks is, will you be obedient to my word? Will you accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior? Let me love all over you and take you away from what Satan is trying to destroy from you. That's what that is. If we stay without Christ, we're a slave to sin. We're a slave to Satan and he's going to use and abuse us any way he wants to. But God is saying, if you're going to be a slave to something, be a slave to my love that gives you respect and honor and forgiveness and joy and gladness. That's who I am. See, God doesn't want you to be like the five foolish versions who was resting on other people's faith, other people's resources, other people's um, beliefs. That when the trumpet sound and that gate was open, the five wise, they were ready because their oil was trimmed. They were ready. They were prepared. But the five wise thought that they can use that resources. But folks, I'm telling you, you're not going to be able to use other people's resources to get into heaven. 
You have to prepare yourself by receiving Jesus Christ as his personal savior, being in the word of God, doing the things that is obedient to the Lord to help others. That's what's going to be there. It's not by works, folks, lest any man should boast. It's not by works. It's by believing. Believing. That's, all, that's what God is saying. Believe on my son. Let me give you an example. There was a centurion, high honored guard. You know, and he went to Jesus, look, I, I need you to please save my servant boy. And Jesus says, well, I will, I will, I will go and, 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 you know, and, 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 and save this boy, heal him. And the centurion said, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. You just say the word and I know it's done. He says, I have many soldiers behind me. Whenever I tell them, they do what I say. They go where I tell them to go. You say the word, Jesus, and I know that it's done. You know what amazed the Lord about this? This centurion wasn't a Jew. He was a Gentile. And by faith, he believed that if Jesus was going to speak the word to make it happen, it would come to pass. When the centurion went back to his home, everybody came out to explain to him that that servant boy was healed and he was alive. And he knew it was at the same hour that he told Jesus, just say the word and I believe that you will do it. Folks, that's how God works. It's by believing, not by works. Believing, that's, that's, that, that's it. That's the word of words. Believe on the Son, Jesus Christ, and all that he came to do. Receive him and trust in him and exercise that faith and go, Lord, I surrender myself to you completely. I repent, meaning that I change my way of thinking and I want to think the way that you think. I want to be led by the Holy Spirit so that I am doing the things that you want me to do to help others, to heal people, to cast out those demons, to comfort people with the words, which is the word of God. Folks, I come to you right now who are seeking that same peace and joy and true love. If you're seeking that, that's all God is asking. If you want that freedom from sin, if you want that freedom from that sin nature, if you want to know that when you ask for forgiveness, it was all gone, God doesn't remember it. It's, it's, it's passe. Then repeat this word to me. If you want the Lord, repeat it to be free. Heavenly Father, I come to you as a sinner. I accept you, Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. Pour forth the Holy Spirit in me. Use me for your glory. I accept Jesus as my one and only, and I'm willing to serve you. If you have done that, find a place that's going to show you the word of God and help you to live a free life. In Jesus Christ. This is Brenda with Your Life Matter once again. Peace, love, and joy. Until next time.